I've been going down the blue since I was 13. And, and yeah. these are the most ambitious owners I've seen. You know, all they're asking for us, you know, there's loads of Blues fans. You know, there's there's thousands upon thousands of Blues fans. Let's just get down there for the Sunderland game. And let's just show him what it's like. Uh, you know, as St Andrews used to be. <laughs> Going on Blue Now, Aziz, we are back with another podcast, the Royal Blue Podcast. This is episode 17 and joining me is Nicholas Langston from Chatting Blues and Adam Lees. Another Blue Nows, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, uh, John, I'm good, man. Good to get into the episode. Yeah, it'll be a good episode, transfer deadline day, so yeah. it's time to do it, aren't we? <laughs> That's it, boys. So, um, I just want to get your thoughts so far on uh, how are you feeling uh, obviously with uh, Tony Mowbray and stuff at the minute obviously we had uh, John Eustis at the start of the season and then we had um, uh, unfortunately we had uh, Wayne Rooney and then obviously now we got uh, Tony Mowbray so I mean where we are now what's your thoughts boys do you want me to go first Ad? yeah crack on mate go for it yeah uh, so for, for, for me personally like uh, the Rooney situation um, it was just a no go from day one. Do you know what I mean? Like I just knew what what happened. I knew was going to happen. Do you know what I yeah. mean? And uh, I think a lot of Blues fans knew that. Do you know what I mean? And 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 I did get behind him. It was like as soon as he was he was announced, I thought I thought okay, there's nothing I can do about this now. As much as I didn't want him in because I knew what would happen uh, when he was in, I thought you know he's the Blues manager. I want to swing games. I'll get behind him. And, uh, you know, even from the first game against Middlesbrough, I was just like, you know, he's just proving. Um, I mean, this is this is just his first game. He's just proving what an inept manager is. Do you know what I mean? And, um, and, and obviously, you know, we've seen a few little glimpses against Ipswich. And, and you know, I've done a video after the Ipswich game. So in the first 45 minutes, was bang on. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Like the, and, and the Cardiff game, it was a poor Cardiff team away from home. But, um, you know, I was willing to get behind him. But he's just, his tactics were just all over the gas, mate. And like, for me, uh, a manager comes in and, and assesses the strengths and the weaknesses of the team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't come in play, thinking you're going to play like Man City with the, with the players Blues have got. And, and yeah. for me, that's what he's done. And that was his, his big downfall, really. Uh, and, and a mass, plus a massive ego. Um, you know, c- completely blaming the players straight away. You know, and it was just it was just going from a, a Eustace team, which was everyone was in it together, to to being completely ripped apart. And and do you know what? Like, I don't even blame Rooney. Like, I, I don't even. I feel a little bit sorry for Rooney. Yes. Yeah. Put, put it on him, saying you've got to play this no fear style of football. This that and the other, and. Uh, you know, he hasn't got much experience as a, as a manager, so he's put he was put under pressure straight away. It was never going to work, um, so it was a shocker for me. But um, just quickly on the Mowbray thing, really, really pleased to get Tony. In. He's exactly what we need right now. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly what we need. Really pleased with him, man. And 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 I think I think we're we're going to do really well under Tony Mowbray. Add. Yeah, a little bit like it. Um, you know, I could. Um, I was probably on Twitter twelve months ago saying I used to send the man long term, getting hammered on Twitter, and for me, it just wasn't the the problem. Was I, I think sacking him was the right thing to do, Eustace. I think that the problem is they sacked him on paper. Even in that time, even in that time, I, and I was going to say because because it was like I mean it was a shock to me like when the when they sacked him like at that time after those two wins really, as well. The thing is, for me, I was looking at the bigger picture. So I was looking at the last 22 games of last season. He won six out of 22. So yeah. fans are forget, we forget that. And then you look at the start of the season we had. We beat a Leeds team at the last minute. A penalty, Djokovic hits it off the keeper's foot and it goes in the top corner. A, 
a Leeds team that was sulky, didn't want to be there. We beat Plymouth by a last minute goal. And then I think there was a, maybe one more win. <clears throat> and then we went the whole of September with dreadful performances and lost, I think, nearly every game in September. And I think if they'd got rid of him then, I don't think any fan would have moaned. I think I think it was right. I think it was, I think that was, but then obviously they give him the backies game, which again, it, it flipped on its head for me, that game did with the ref's decision. Um, yeah. we were at one, nil, at one nil down, we were the we weren't the best team in the in the game. Baggies were on top, and then we you know we we beat Huddersfield three days later, and then they sack him. So I think the Rooney coming in was set out to fail from the start. I think because the media wanted him to fail, our fans were annoyed that we just sat Eustace, so they didn't want him. And it was all it was so like it was just set to fail. And the way he came in and delivered everything that he did, he got the players. He didn't he didn't get players on board straight away either. So, yeah, for me, it, 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 I felt sorry for him. Um, what he was trying to do, I, I, I thought was the right thing. It was the way he went about it that I thought was the wrong thing. And that's what got him the sack. Because if you listen to some of the things Mowbray's now saying, he, mm. it's, he's saying similar to Rooney. He's just delivering it in a better in a better sense. You know, you look mm. at what he said at Leicester the weekend, first 45 minutes, we battered and we could have been four, five nil up. He brings on some of the old players and almost questions what the hell they, they come on and did. And we got hammered the second half. So Mowbray looked very frustrated in the after the match with the, with some of the players. And I think Rooney could see that, but Rooney just delivered it wrong. I think, you know, were, were, were anyone after Rooney, the fans were going to accept anybody. It could have been absolutely anybody. So, but Mowbray's definitely the right choice for me. Definitely the right choice. And I'm, I'm happy we've got Tony Mowbray. I feel confident in him. Um, I like the players he's he's going after for in the transfer window. I feel like he know he's got a vision. He knows what he's doing, and he's like, okay, I know we're getting rid of these come the end of the season. So I'm planning for the future. Where Rooney yeah. was more, these ain't good enough. Just what the hell is what the hell's going on? I don't want to work with these. And it was kind of like, well, you've got to work with them. So yeah. find find a way of making it work. And Rooney just looked like he didn't want it. So yeah, for me, uh, Moby's the right thing, right way, the right way forward, and um, I think we'll have a good end to the season. You know, I think we'll, we, I don't think we'll be fighting relegation that we was all fearing under Rooney. No, um, so no, I, think I, we'll, I think, I think we'll be, I think we'll, you know, we're not. I, I, I've just been on a Twitter feed thing, and there was a one or two fans saying we could challenge playoffs. No, no, we can't. We're miles off that. You're deluded if you think we can challenge for the well, playoffs. Well, you say we, we, we are miles off, but I mean, we're only ten points, or we're twelve points from the top six still. So yeah, I think, I think to get playoffs, I think we've got to pick up an average of two points a game for the remainder. Yeah. And obviously, all them teams above us have not, I can't win. That which ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think so. I don't. I think, I think we could try and get somewhere around twelve. I think ten, twelve. I think that would be a good, good, good season for me. That wouldn't. I think yeah, mate. mate anything above, any above seventeenth uh, for me, mate, is a result anyway. Because I mean. Yeah. Now, the last 10 years, you know, that's what it's been like, and it lads like what I mean. You know, uh, do you do you see Mowbray being at Blues lot long term, though, or or just like a short uh, step um, in? No, I don't. I, I, I kind of, but when he first got appointed, I thought, okay, he's going to lay the foundations for 12 months, 18 months, and then they might try and get a big, a bigger name in, like a, a, a Cooper or something like that, and, and really push for the. You know, try and get in the, the top four of the league and get playoffs and stuff. But I don't know, man. I can see him kind of staying here now for a bit. I think. Yeah. If, I think yeah. if you, if, I think if he builds well and he gets the players in and he starts well next season, I think you got you keep him. Let let him let him build. Let him let him do what he's going to do. He's good at this. He's good in this league. So yeah, yeah let let him let him have a right good crack at it. Yeah, and, yeah. And so unique, unless, unless results, unless results stay that he's got to go you know if we start losing all of a sudden 10 on the bounce then then yeah you've got to think about he ain't the man for long term but now i think at the minute the signs are for me you keep him there you know let's get some stability within the club how many times yeah. have we just changed the manager what about you nicholas yeah 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 i completely agree mate i think it i think he'll be here for Obviously, this season, I think uh, they'll give him a, uh, all of next season. Obviously, uh, depending on results, you know, if we, if we go on a bad run, then, you know, if questions will be asked. But listen, I just I just like this guy and I, I trust in him, man. Like the signings, Alex Pritchard, um, 
the, the South Korean fella Park Sung Ho, and yeah. um, I mean, if 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 if, if I tell you what, if we only decided Andre Dazal, I'd have been, I wouldn't have been very happy. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I don't really know much about him, if I'm being honest, and he, you know. Yeah. Yeah, our fans are saying this that and the other about him. But do you know what? He's slow. I, I, I trust him what he's doing. I think this Alex Pritchard is going to be a great signing. I really yeah, do. Yeah, I'll make The way oh, Mowbray wants to play. He, he, oh, I'll he, give you know, it well. Think about it. He knows everything about it. He, he'll be that number 10 in the, in kind of like uh, an advanced playmaker role. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and then you've got... I think he's going to completely shift the midfield around. So you're going to... You, you might see Dazal and um, Park Park Sung Ho together yeah, as a two, rather than Sunjik and Bielik. And you'll see Pritchard as a 10, <clears throat> Miyake out wide on the right, Dembele out on the left, and Stansfield up top. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the team. I think that's the team we're working towards, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Bielik or right, we've got Bielik down to the squad, don't really, though. I mean, to look at it. We yeah, have, we have really, we? I mean, I think we've got a squad, look. Mm. Yeah, yeah, really good, good squad. You just got to hope someone like Stansfield don't pick up an injury because if that happens, we're, we're struggling then big time to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, I mean, you can't I mean I've, I've just seen as well that um, uh, well a couple of hours ago, Ruddy's injured as well in in we're sort of scrambling <laughs> keeper. In, you know, I thought this would be a nice window. I won't even bother if got no one else. I were, <clears> and uh, and then and now we we you know Ruddy's out. And we've only got average, you know, so it's 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 probably a little bit of a dampener on the on the window, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, you got. I feel like we need, and we've, they've just released um, that younger keeper. That is it, Jay Jay Cock or something. They've released him Jay today, Cock, so yeah. there's, there's there's not even a backup keeper now. And I think they've loaned another the other keeper, the other youth keeper, out to someone else. Oh, that so my own. No, I think there's another one. Um, Oliver Oliver Summit. Um, I can't think what his name is. I'll have, I'll have a look. It's, um, they've loaned him out today. So for me, they've got a. They, I think they need to try and sign a keeper now. Well, yeah. we've only got two keepers in the building. We've got two keepers, average and um, and uh, who did you just mention, Ja? Uh, there was Mayo as well. He came from the academy, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, that's Oliver Bassey. Bassey. Oliver Bassey has, has, Oliver has Bassey. been loaned out today. So they've got no. They've got no backup keeper at all anywhere. So they're. Uh, They've got to get one now, sure. They have to be looking now. Would you two pick a uh, uh, three Java Rudy anyway, though, or not? Nah, no, no chance. I mean, no, nah. I don't. I don't think I would. I don't think either keeper, either of them, are great with the ball at their feet. I think no. they both they both kick it straight out of play. But I do think Rudy's a much better shot stopper and commands his yeah. area a lot better than Everidge. I yeah. feel a lot more confident with Rudy in goals than I would Everidge. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, because um, I'm just looking at the squad now. Uh, and now we've had those three players come in as well. We've got Dozel, um, Richard, and um, pa uh, Pike as well, isn't we? Pike or Park, yeah. somehow, however you pronounce it. But we've got some we've got some academy players as well um, put in the squad. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed that as well. We've got quite a few academy players uh, put who, in as who's, well. Who's, who's gone in now? Um, well, we did have um, Dixon, Ty Campbell, uh, George Hall's back. Um, See, there, there, there's a player who's forgot about George Hall. George Hall, yeah. Do you know, he's just a great player. Josh Williams. Player. He's just made a, made a weight a bit, mate. No, he, oh, he's an unbelievable player. But he, he's yeah. so into prone. You only have to tap him when he's out for months, man. Do you know he's That's so good? Lead, isn't it? He's so good. He's so good. Do you know what I mean? But he, he, I was saying to my pal the other day, I said you just you might as well just uh, sack it as a professional footballer. He, he's got he's got no. Uh, he just he's he's injured all the time, and and uh, I got really frustrated as well with um. I, like, I love Ethan Laird. I've done a, prop, a video on Ethan Laird when we signed him. I was buzzing with him, man. And uh, he's just injured all the time, man. Do you know what I mean? I know. If we had Ethan Laird, well, it was 100% every week. And Lee Buchanan, we've got the two best full-backs in the league. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, but you know, he, he, he felt a tightness again at half-time against Leicester. 
It's like Jesus Christ. I mean, Tyler Roberts as well, another one, which is really injury prone. He's had a couple of injuries already. And, and he, you know, I'm not going to judge him on the performances he's he's played so far because he hasn't had a good run. So I'm, yeah. not, I'm not slagging him off by any means. But you can just see him catching another injury in a, another week or two. And this I is hope the not, because I like him. Do you like he looks dangerous when he comes on as well, yeah. Mate, when he come on on the Leeds game, uh, Rooney's last game, mate, uh, I thought he made a big impact. Oh, he was just, he was just big and like, boisterous on the ball, you know what I mean? He was always there, like, creating chances and stuff. I mean, I was impressed with him. Like, um, I, mean, I don't know what your thoughts was. I mean, like you say, you know, he's been injured and stuff and that. But uh, My thoughts on it, I just, like, we haven't seen enough of him because he's been yeah. injured. And this was the problem. Uh, at QPR and, and at Leeds, he, he's injury prone. Um, you know, we've brought a few players in the summer that have been injury prone, and, and yeah. it's kind of, kind of come back to bite us on the arse a little bit. So, I think his yeah. four year contract is going to bite us on the arse if we can't get him fit. Was it a four year contract? <laughs> yeah, give him a four year yeah, contract yeah. in the summer. <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> He signed a four-year contract six months ago. That's shocking, that is. So, what about yeah, uh, yeah. Ayu as well? Would you keep him or would you let him go? He's only, what's he, on a two-and-a-half-year contract? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a boy, with a boy deal at the end of it. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't buy him because it's it's a three million clause, isn't it, to buy him? Yeah. The, the deal, the, I don't think he's worth that. He, I don't think he's put any real great performances in. It's looked a little bit for me. It's look, he, he looks athletic and he looks like he, he, he's strong and stuff, but he just doesn't look like he's got a football brain. Yeah. Who? Oh, right. I'll send him back. I'll send him back. I'll, I'll get yeah. someone else in for it. I'll send him back. But the thing is, I think there's no, there's, I think someone, one of you two guys just mentioned it. there's no clause in it, is there? So we can't, no, send, we can't him send him back. back. And it's the same with Burke. I mean, I'd love but, to send Burke oh. back, Oliver Burke. Yeah, mate, but, I'm uh, I don't rate him at all, mate. Gotta be honest, he's probably one of the worst players I think I've ever seen down the blues. It, them, <laughs> it's been, what, yeah, and that's saying something. We've had some right dross down there, but yeah, well, well, just, we spoke about him before, ain't we? Had like, oh, yeah, I just I don't get him. I, mean, I, I, I don't rate him. I cannot get the bloke. Yeah. I just yeah, I yeah, can't he's get stealing him. and leaving. He's stealing and leaving as a footballer. But uh, it'd, be, it'd be good if we could have got them two back and then bring brought another couple of um, loans in. But um, what's what's your two? What, what's your views on Adam, Adam uh, Pritchard like? Um, good. Yeah, I'm mate. I think this, for this for this league, I think he knows Mowbray, and I think mm -hmm. he he fits that number ten role perfectly. Really, does. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with him, and for the price we got him at. Oh really yeah, mate. Still brilliant. Uh, the only thing I'm gutted about is his age, because he's like thirty, and he like when he's getting on a bit there. But I mean, you know, for like a couple of seasons, you know, I'll, 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 yeah. I definitely think he's going to be a good role at Blues, lot. Definitely. Yeah, he'll be a good player moving forward, even. Yeah. 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 I, I, think he'll get them I think he'll get them front four proper play. Do you know what I mean? The way Tony Mowbray wants to play. You know, yeah. through the lines, you know. Um, yeah, pressing from the front. You know, he's really a real technical little wizard, to be, to be fair, um, Pritchard is. And then, you, you know, you had Miyoshi, Dembele. I mean, Tony Mowbray likes his small technical players up front. Yeah. You know what I mean, so, um, but I, I, like at the moment, I'm still a little worried about the defence, especially now Sanderson's out for three or four weeks. Um, yeah. And and obviously now the goalkeeping area, you know, what do we do now if we can't get a goalkeeper over the line? Yeah, that, that that's a worry for me nowadays. The keeper situation's a big worry. Yeah. We'll have to sign up, lads. <laughs> Yeah, get you in the next, yeah, get in between the goalposts. <laughs> Mike Taylor, give Mike Taylor the shirt. Give him that. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, get him yeah. back. But yeah, it'll be, oh, uh, be interesting to see who he starts against Baggies. What his defence, how he lines his defence up against yeah. Baggies. How do yeah. you feel about the Baggies game? Like after the Stout game? Feeling confident or not? Um, well, you can hit them while they're down, can't you? At the minute, because they're obviously just losing the Wolves game. Um, yeah, massive so, for them, really. Yeah. 
I, I, I think we go there and get a result. I, I'm feeling confident in it, if I'm honest. Yeah, I'm, uh, I reckon we'll do them. Two one yeah. blues. Come on, you blue boys. I reckon it, I, can, I was going to go one nil. I was, I was going to go one nil win. What about you, Nicholas? Yeah. Uh, do you know what, lads? I'm going to go for a two-two. Um, I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm a little bit worried about the defence and the and the goalkeeping situation. Uh, really, I'm mm. and I think we're going to see goals there. I think we're going to see a couple of goals definitely at West Brom. So if yeah. we can score a couple and then get a get a draw, you know, obviously three would be better and get the win. But um, I'm not as conf I'm not that I'm not as confident as, as you two lads uh, to get a win there. I'll, I'll probably say a draw. I fancy us to get a draw. I'll be happy with yeah. a draw. I'll I take a draw. Head and heart kind of situation, isn't it? You know, you 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 want to win, of course you do. But I think on paper yeah. you'd probably, I think a betting man would probably go a draw if you were putting money on it. But yeah. um, I don't know, man. I just think Tony Mowbray will. He'll, I think the problem is because we've had Rooney for so long and everyone's so yeah. used to it. Oh, oh Christ, you know, I'll, I'll take a draw today. Against anyone, I'll just take a draw. I'd like to think now Mowbray's going to get going to get these players fired up, get them into a, a routine, and I think we'll see Pritchard in the starting eleven, one hundred percent. I think yeah. he's ready to go. And I, I, I don't know, man, you know, you like there's a little bit of a buzz there, isn't there, at the minute? So mm -hmm. can he continue it and get us? Because that first half against Leicester, mate, okay. super, yeah. mate. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say, mate. That's the mindset I've got, like. I mean, mate, look how much money that they've pumped into that team. Premier League team, mate, you know, mate. And first off, mate, we give them everything. Like, I mean, how we didn't score, I doubt now. But, you know, I mean, you look at them. Mate, I reckon we'll do West Brom, mate, honestly. I really do. I'd like to. I'm really I'd confident, like to mate, honestly. I really am. That's good. Yeah, that's good. And then, yeah, the first <laughs> half against Leicester was probably the, the, the best 45 minutes I've seen. In in uh, ten or fifteen years down down the blues, honest to God, lads, the first half against Leicester was absolute quality. You know, as soon as Lairds went off and brought Roberts on, and uh, uh, obviously I didn't get a ticket for that game. I was at the Stoke game, but um, as soon as I brought Roberts on, I thought, oh, gee, here we go. You know, <laughs> it looked like we went to a back three, and uh, and and. The goal on 48 minutes, Roberts was caught out of position. I was like, you know, but uh, but the first half was unreal. And I think that's what we're going to start seeing more of under Tony Mowbray. He's, he's yeah. that what, you know, you know, that was against Leicester. And though it's their second string team, it's still a decent team. You know, if it, if we'd applied any other team, pretty much any any other team in the championship, we, we'd have, uh, you know, if we, if we could have put our chances away, basically, we'd have been fine, man. You know, we'd have been two or three. Two or three goals up at half time. Yeah, it should have been two or three up. It should have been well, two or three up. Always, uh, four or five. <laughs> yeah, that's on Four or five. Two or three, or two two or three <laughs> at a minimum. It should have been. Yeah. Half time. Uh, at the bare yeah. minimum. I've never. I, such League One finishing that was. Some real poor shots and all sorts. Yeah. And just last minute touches that just you know the ball weren't sitting nicely but on, on another day we should be three or four nil up going into half time there yeah, yeah, yeah. i can uh, i can see like massive improvements though i can like i mean you know, have to look at it really i mean i know we had a couple of games under rooney where we played well i mean even when we played like uh, leicester um when he was in charge rooney you know i mean we played well then um mm. but like Nothing's really changed, really, apart from the managers. And look how better the team's playing already. And as well, Mowbray plays a similar style to how uh, Rooney plays as well. He wants to play from the back as well, doesn't he? But so you two were saying, yeah. you know, we don't speak to the players and stuff. You know, like I think uh, Tony Mowbray, like he's kind of got that. Um, and operate like to nurture the players. You know what I mean? Like to try and get them to come together. Like a bit like a, a bit like a John Eustace kind of thing. You know what I mean? And I think he's like he's uh, definitely for the fans as well. Like so, I think as the weeks go on, I think it's going to be like a lot better. I like him personally. I think Mowbray's your middle ground between Rooney and Eustace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's Eustace was a bit too soft, a bit you know, like a, a little bit of a PE teacher kind of thing and stuff. Rooney was yeah, <laughs> you know, almost like yeah, your headmaster. And yeah, then Mowbray's your your favourite teacher in the middle that everyone wants to be with. So. 
I, I think we've got the perfect mix in Moby now. I think because he, yeah. he's, he he will say tell the players who are not performing that they're not performing, and but I think he will also put a shoulder around the ones that need that that bit of a confidence boost. Where I don't think Rooney would have done that, uh, but I don't think Eustace would have been the ones to tell certain players I ain't happy with that performance. You've got to up it. So I think Mowbray's the the perfect man in the middle of the two of them. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Mark Venus has obviously joined him as well, hasn't he? I mean, what's your views on Mark Venus with him, lads? <laughs> Do you want me to answer that, Jack? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark, well, he's followed him everywhere. <laughs> he's followed him everywhere, hasn't he? So you know, you just yeah. have to trust in him. You know, I think they've, I think they've, they've managed to give her for seventeen years, something like that. So you know, they obviously trust each other. Um, I trust in, in in Mark Venus and Tony Mowbray. Uh, so yeah, you know, it, listen, only, things can only get better. We've just got to be a little bit patient, man. Do you know what I mean? Things are, things are not going our way in terms of injuries. Um, you know, but but listen, we're on the up, man. We're on the up. That's the main thing. Definitely, yeah, I agree. I agree. Patience is key here. Patience is key. Yeah, it's not going to happen overnight, and we can't run before we can before we can walk. So let's just let let Mowbray do it in the time he's going to do it. And like I say, yeah. you can't do it without the players that he wants and stuff, and no. let him, his, his ideas get across on the training ground and you know and work on it. So yeah, patience is definitely going to be key here. But it will it will it will we'll get a, we'll get a good tune out of this Birmingham City team. And for next season, yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, the summer's coming as well, isn't it? And they were saying that the uh, summer transfer is going to be the biggest one in it, or where they can uh, spend a bit more money because the FFP and stuff. And obviously, we've got a lot of players where the contracts run out as well, so that's going to be like an issue. So, look, we're going to need to spend some money and to get players in it. We like so. I mean, that's uh, that's quite exciting, really. Who Malby's going to be looking out for and stuff, you know, the scouts and stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so am I. Summer, summer transfer window. I'm looking forward to that. See what business we do. You know, uh, I'm expecting some, some, you know, kind of big signings and 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 signings to get us out of this league, really. Yeah. Um, I think I think the January transfer window has been better than I expected. If I'm being honest. Um, I think he's put putting the building blocks in to be a very good squad, a very good um, Tony Mowbray squad, what can challenge up the top six. Um, obviously, it's not going to happen this season, you know. Uh, so, 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 like Adam said, we've just got to be patient, trust in the process. You know, we're going to lose games. Um, but, but listen, it's all about next season and the season after that. If we don't, if we don't get in the playoffs next season, top six, then and then. They're, they're, they're going to invest again. Do you know what I mean? And then we'll go for it again. So it's it's none of this, uh, you know, 17th, 18th um, uh, finishes at the end of the season from now on. I, this is, all I can see is Blues going up from now on. Do you know what I mean? Especially after that yeah. statement Tom uh, Knighthead put out. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, my, fantastic. Fantastic. Like we, we, had, we kind of had an idea that was going to go down this Man City route with the sports quarter and... And and all this all this stuff like um so so yeah we've just got to trust trust in what what they're doing really lads in in my opinion yeah so, I agree I agree and I think you know if if is it Dazal I think is how you say his name if if yeah. if he becomes a success from now to the end of the season well he's free at the end of the season so you'd like to think he stays if if the South Korean lad kicks on and he becomes a success we've got our two centre mids for free. But they yeah. cost us nothing. We ain't, they ain't, we ain't spent a penny on him. And then we, if Pritchard becomes a, a, a good player, if he settles in as we all hope he does, well, he's only cost us under grand. So three out of the starting eleven has cost us under grand. So then we've got some money now to go and, you know, strikers where it's going to cost money and, a, and yeah. a decent young keeper. He's probably going to cost a couple of mil. So, you know, it, 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 I think he's building, he's putting the building blocks in place, like you say, and we can... We can start looking up now rather than looking over our shoulder or down. Yeah. Six all you mate. <laughs> Go on, you blue boys. I like so you mate. I really am, mate, honestly. Mate, it's like um uh, Nicholas was just saying as well, you know, like about Wagner's like you know, like his vision like in the long term, you know, mate. I've, I've 
I just feel I've been really lucky to have Tom. Like, I just fair told me had a bit of luck, you know what I mean? And I can just, I don't know, I can feel it. Like, I think this is like as the years go on, you know, like you say, I think it's going to get like any better and better. Like, I probably hope, like, in the next two two years, I'd say, like, we'll be back in the Premier League, hopefully. And against yeah, the Villa Bastards. Back. <laughs> it's got to be the plan, isn't it? It's got to be the plan. And I like I like his interview done the other day about, you know, the Sunderland game, saying, like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll change the pricing, we'll make it cheaper, yeah. we'll, we're going to do this, we've got five key strategies to make it affordable, make, and yeah. get and let's get the ground sold out. And he's basically saying, you know, I'm doing my end of the deal. I'm, I'm putting all the foundations in, trying to get a new headquarters of a stadium. But you fans have got to come back then and, and show yeah, your yeah. support yeah. as well. And that's what I, I, I'd, I'd love to see St Andrews packed out again. Yeah, mate. Yeah, right. With the atmosphere roaring, mate, nothing better is that. That's what I mean. I'd, I'd love it. You know, you know, people asking for a home ticket rather than you can turn up on the day and buy one. Yeah. I tell you so, what, like if if they do, if they do um, sell that Sunderland game out, <laughs> you know, we've got to take it from there. But if if we sell that Sunderland game out, then that's the bar set. Do you know what I mean? Because these owners. I've not seen owners like this. I've been going down the blue since I was 13. And, and yeah. these are the most ambitious owners I've seen. You know, all they're asking for us, you know, there's loads of blues fans. You know, there's there's thousands upon them, thousands of blues fans. Let's just get down there for the Sunderland game. And let's just show him what it's like, uh, you know, how St Andrews used to be. Even, yeah. even, back, even back five years ago, four years ago, before COVID and all that. Do you know what I mean? Do you remember the Fulham game, the last game of the season? Yeah, yeah in, the sun, in the sun. Yeah, let's get it like that. Do you know what I mean? Even if it's just for one game, because <laughs> because at the end of the day, Wagner, Wagner's coming, and he hasn't. I mean, the Leeds game was all right at home, considering you know reduced capacity. But but let's have the old stadium for man, and let's and and like like Adam said, you know, he's tr he's 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 meeting us halfway. He's giving tickets away. He's giving tickets to charities. He's, he's doing this, that, and he's reducing prices because he knows. But Blues fans are a little bit traumatized from 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 the last. I don't know. You could go back as last ten years, but especially yeah, yeah. the last four or five, six years. Um, and, and people don't want to get their hopes up. Do you know what I mean? People don't want to get the go down there and get their hopes up and get them dashed again. That's that's the top and bottom of it. But um, but no, no. If people are watching this and that, and they, and they're, you know, in two minds whether to get down the blues again because because we've had this false hope before. Then just mm. get down and just even if it's just for one game, and if you like it, then go to the next one or or, or the one after. Yeah, but listen, they're made. They're making it affordable now. They're making it, you know, twenty pound a ticket and stuff. You can't you can't knock them prices now. You, there's there's no. no excuse. You know, don't. Don't turn up when we're back in the Prem if you can't turn up now for twenty quid a ticket. Like, I, you know, I get, I get people as you know, times are tough and stuff and things and stuff. But people will go and pay 40, 50 quid for a ticket when we're in the Prem, but they won't, they won't pay twenty quid to come and see us when we're at, when we're against Sunderland and the the owners are doing all they can. You know, I get it under Dong Ren and the Chinese and stuff. It was a vicious yeah. place to go, you know, and I, I hated putting money into the club. And, and having a season ticket because he, he mm. drove me up the wall. But you know, now I'm like, you know what? I I I want to spend my my money down there, mm. and I want to go and see it, and I want fans to come and enjoy it and experience it, and and get on board of it, and get on board of it now. Because even the food, nice as well. Isn't it? Like, the, I mean, if you notice that the catering's got better as well, lads. Oh yeah, yeah. right, yeah. right. <laughs> Have you got that mustard off your beard yet, Jack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mate, mate. You know what's mad as well? Look, I never realised that I had the mustard on there till after I edited the video <laughs> and then uploaded it. And I watched Sorry. it back and I was like, fuck, you know, because that mustard there, and I thought, oh, fuck it, I'll just leave it. <laughs> good, lad. Oh, good lad. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Yeah. Nice it's... point in a hot dog, lads, man. It's proper nice. Yeah. That's it, man. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. But. <laughs> Let's just let's hope for a win the weekend against Baggies, and then I think we, we yeah. can kick on now to the end of the season. I really think we can do it. Even a draw, like you say, even a draw. Mm. I'd be, I'd take a draw all day long. You know, team that are in the, I think they're in the top six, are they at the minute? Like they're, they're no mugs in the, at the minute, Baggies, and so you know. But 
Yeah. Let's see how I've just seen. I've just seen a uh, Richard Wilford tweet. Well, just before we come on air, and uh, he said that um, Mowbray said uh, that the, the January business is pretty much done, unless there's a, you know, unless there's a major development. So I wouldn't expect anyone in between now and now and midnight, lads. And let you know if, if it's going to be someone, it's going to be a goalkeeper. Let's be honest. But he's basically said it's done. You know that that's come from Richard Wilford. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just yeah. got to hope some so hope some club turns around and says, "Do you fancy taking this keeper on loan at a short, at a cheap deal?" And it's a keeper that's of interest because, mm. yeah, like you yeah. say, Effridge for a couple of weeks is a bit of a worry with no backup keeper. Yeah, yeah. Like you say, he's terrible at, at commanding his area. At least, at least from corners, he would would get the ball. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Every stays on his line. And it's a massive worry, especially when you haven't got like, uh, especially if you're not playing Mark Roberts and, and and Kevin Long. Do you know what I mean? At least yeah. with them, that I was heading it out. But with Everidge, he stays on his line, and I could see us conceding a few goals from set pieces if 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 we end up having Everidge for a while. No one knows we'll that how long. We'll see, boys. We we don't know how long Rudy's injuries for, though, do we? It's just obviously broke today that he's injured, but no one knows whether is it a week, two weeks, is it six weeks? No, no, we, no one knows at the minute the extent of the injury. Let's hope it's not longer. <sighs> you want to hope, we'll yeah. be all right, man. We'll be all right. Have some yeah. faith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've really enjoyed this podcast. Have you two enjoyed it as well? Yeah, yeah no, really brilliant, mate. Brilliant again. You do it again. Yeah, 100%, mate. Nice one, boys. Right then, we'll, let, we'll leave it there then. We'll let you uh, enjoy the rest of your night, lads. Yeah, Thank you very yeah, much for uh, tuning in. And uh, yeah, put the blues. Keep right on. Yeah, keep right on, lads. All the best. I'll see you soon. I'll see you later.